Welcome to RPG Elite, where we put the RP back into RPG, giving you tools and tips on how to make your RPG experience more immersive and enjoyable. If this is your first time coming to the channel, I want to go ahead and welcome you. And for all the rest of you who may be coming back, what's up, my fellow leech? All right. If this is your first time coming to the channel, I'm going to give you some quick cliff notes on what this channel is about. Number one, we cover classic RPGs. So that means RPGs that are 20 years old or older. You might have heard of them called OSRs or old school RPGs. Well, we're totally about that here on RPG Elite. And then another thing that we wrap into that is alternative genre RPGs. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm gonna give it to you simple, folks. Anything other than fantasy. There you go. See how simple that was? Anything other than fantasy. Science fantasy, science fiction, superheroes. Can't wait to get there. That is my favorite genre of all time. And I have multiple games. Goodness gracious, we've got so much content to cover on this channel. It's silly. We've got a lot of content, folks. And then we also focus on RPG Elite philosophy. Now, it's not just the name of our channel. There is a whole philosophy behind what it means to be an RPG elite. Now, if you want a brief overview on what that is, you can go to the video right here and click on that. Pause this one, go there, come back, and then we'll get started on what we're getting ready to do here. All right, Coolio. So today, as I said, this is going to be our first foray into a classic RPG, old school RPG, folks. So which one are we about to cover? One of my faves, Gamma World. So strap in, folks, and let's do this as we give you an overview and a brief history of this old school classic RPG. And then I'll meet you on the other side. Let's do this. So let's get into a brief overview of Gamma World. The first edition of Gamma World released in 1978 from the granddaddy of all RPG companies, TSR Hobbies. Now, most of you weren't even thought of except by God, and I was just a mere 10 years old. However, I didn't get in on this particular game at the ground floor because I didn't start playing RPGs until I was in my mid to late teens. So think circa 1983, 1984, somewhere around there. The second edition released in 1983. So we're talking a mere five years later. Third edition, even shorter, three years later in 1986. The fourth edition took some time to release coming out in 1992 and the longest stretch between releases was with the 5th edition, which didn't come out until 2000. 6th edition dropped three years later in 2003, and the 7th and last edition released in 2010. For the purposes of this video, we'll only focus on the 1st through 4th edition, since they meet my criteria of what a classic RPG is. Now. Though the 5th edition does meet the time frame criteria, it wasn't a standalone game, but a supplement to the science fiction RPG Alternity. And yes, this is another classic RPG we will highlight on this channel in the future, God willing. Now from day one, Gamma World touted itself as a science fantasy role playing game. It was the first RPG of this genre and an inspiration to spawn others like it, the most recent which has been on this channel, Numenera. But to call it a science fantasy RPG is not completely accurate. It is a science fantasy post-apocalyptic RPG. So it rolls all three of those genres into one RPG. 
Now the setting and background of the RPG goes something like this, and it depends on whatever edition that you're going with. In the first and second editions of the game, a global nuclear war broke out, devastating the globe. Now this decimated the world and turned much of it into a nuclear wasteland. The fourth edition says it was the final wars that changed the globe. The fifth edition says it was a nuclear response to an alien attack. Sixth edition went in a totally different direction, blaming unbridled and irresponsible use of nanotechnology and artificial intelligence, which is really weird, by the way, but hey, there it is. Seventh edition says the activation of a large hadron collider caused multiple realities to bleed into ours in an event dubbed the big mistake. Now, out of all of these explanations, I believe the third edition sums it up best. Let me read right from the book. So follow along with me. In the dim past of what is now called the shadow years, mankind had built a world of wonder and glory. The world had consolidated into several mighty nations and seeking new frontiers Man had set out to explore the heavens. What catastrophe could devastate such a powerful people, none now know, as the events are buried in the ashes of destruction. Legends persist, of course, but the truth of these may never be known. Some hold that man became too proud of his accomplishments, and the forces of the cosmos sought to teach him a lesson. Others propose that wicked men came into power and chose a path of conquest. Still, others believe it was all the result of a colossal mistake. So, as you can see, after the third edition, they kind of looked at that and ran with one of those, right? So, one of those possibilities is the one that they chose. However, the common thread in each and every edition is this. Something happened. A cataclysm shook the world. When the dust settled, the earth was reborn. The air, water, climate, and land transformed. And from it, new denizens arise. There are those who used to be human, but now are not quite that. Something has changed them into a cross between what they once were to something else. They still appear humanoid, but with changes. Maybe they have green skin, or bug eyes, or antenna, or are even bestial or reptilian. And then there are those who are still the animals they once were, but are now different. Mutated animals. Most are intelligent, while others have grown to enormous size. Some are crosses between two different animals. But if that wasn't enough, the very plant life has metamorphosed. Able to do things it was not able to do before, like move, climb, communicate, and some can even fly. And last, there are the unstained, those who have not changed from their original genetic stock, the pure strain humans. Now these are the four different character types a player can be. And the game does not try to list every different kind of humanoid or plant or animal that you can be. They give you a good bank of examples in the fourth edition that you can use as a template if you want to make something weird and crazy. But imagination is a must here. For example, a couple years ago, I ran a mini Gamma World campaign and I had a player in my game who, check it out now, they were a symbiote fungus that controlled a grizzly bear. 
Yeah, so Numenera ain't got nothing on weird, y'all. You understand what I'm saying? So with these new beings came amazing abilities, mutations that allow these creatures to do the unthinkable, read minds, shoot electricity from their bodies, or turn invisible. And many of these have gathered together in what's called cryptic alliances, holding ideologies and philosophies and forming laws that connect them as one society. Add to that the treasure of technology that has been left behind in the ruins of the ancients across the world. Things that almost seem like magic and you have a world of great wonder where exploration is the key to survival. But it also is just as dangerous to explore because some areas pulsate with energy that can affect those who have been changed, stripping away their abilities giving them new ones, or crippling them. This is the world thrust on the PCs, where they can make it as it once was, or into something new entirely. This is the age of Gamma World. Well, there you have it, folks. A overview and a little bit of history on the classic RPG, Gamma World. So in the next coming weeks, you can expect us to focus a little bit on this. Things like we're going to do some character generation. We're going to do some mod combat. We're going to check out some of the other systems in the game as well. And we've got some other things to do in addition to that. Of course, we're still going to be doing RPG Elite Philosophy. Of course, we're going to still do some tutorials and things. Of course, we're going to give you some tips goodness folks we've got so much to cover so what you should do if this is adding value to your rpg experience go ahead and click the subscribe button and make sure you tap that notification bell as well so you'll know exactly when a new video comes out and you can come and look at it with your fellow elites also also if this video has added any value to you, maybe you didn't even know anything about Gamma World, then go ahead and smash that like button. I love saying it like that. Just weird. Just weird. You know what I'm saying? I just like saying it like that. I'm going to say it again. Smash that like button. All right, folks. I'm, I'm done. I'm done being silly. So until next time, you know what I'm going to say. Happy gaming.